Let us teach the New Testament. First Epistle of John, Lesson 14, 1 John 5, verses 14 through 17. In this 14th of 15 lessons on the New Testament book of 1 John, we shall deal with these 10 topics. And this is the confidence that we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask, and God will give him life, to those who commit sins that do not lead to death. There is sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that does not lead to death. Whilst 1 John 5, 14 through 17 was well preserved for 19th centuries, some copyists did introduce textual variants. For example, in chapter 5, verse 14, from the 5th century, a few manuscripts replace we have with let us have. Some manuscripts replace we ask anything with whatever we ask and one manuscript replaced his will with his name. In verse 15, again from the 5th century, some manuscripts read with him instead of from him. And in verse 16, one 5th century manuscript altered those who commit sins to read those who do not commit sins. The Epistle of 1 John and the Gospel of John share many words, expressions, and teachings in common, proof of their common authorship. 1 John 5 verses 14 through 17 further develop reasons for Christians' confidence before God. Christians enjoy power from God to help each other overcome their sins. The Greek preposition pros, used with substantives in the accusative case, mark movement or orientation. Greek prepositions generally modify verbs and govern substantives, that is, nouns, participles, and articular infinitives. Translation of a preposition depends upon its function in a sentence and on the nature and the case of the substantives that it governs. Thus, in 1 John 5, 14 and 17, the preposition pros governs him, a person, and death, both in the accusative case. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you teachable points from the passage. For example, four points on confidence before God. Four points on how Christians receive from God answers to their prayers. Four points on the kind of sin that leads to death and four points on the kind of sin that does not lead to death. Should need be, teach the historical Christian doctrine of sin leading to death. 
Adam's sin leads to corporal death for everyone. Each one's own sins leads to everlasting death unless it be forgiven. Thus Jesus Christ died to take away sins. He rose back to life and offers eternal life to sinners. God gives everlasting life to those who put their trust in Jesus Christ, and God forgives those who confess their sins. The sin that leads to death is to deny that Jesus is the Son of God. Sins that do not lead to death include Christians' wrong deeds and bad habits. After someone or several have read or recited 1 John 5, 14 through 17, in small gatherings of learners, pose queries such as these and let anyone reply. What have you learnt from this passage about God? About Jesus? About sin? About prayer? Whilst preaching, teaching, or leading, Recommend ways in which to apply the passage, putting it into practice. For example, exhort Christians to stop criticizing and slandering one another and to start praying for them to experience new life. Form small groups of women and girls and separate groups of men and boys. Let them confess their sins and pray for each other. Coach house church shepherds in how to do the same with their little congregations. Urge non-believers to stop sinning against God by their unbelief and to confess before others that Jesus is the Son of God. Please read five times 1 John 5 verses 18 through 21 before you view the next video lesson.